Good morning and welcome to worship at Christ Lutheran Church, a community of faith reaching out to change lives. We are thankful that you have joined us this morning wherever you may be and know that our prayers are with you and for you this day, this fourth Sunday of the season of Easter. Um, the bulletin uh, for today's service is available uh, connected to the live stream, so uh, I invite you to uh, pull that up now if you'd like to follow along and join in the hymns. I want to thank our faithful music director, Hondo Nakur. Thanks to Don Roland for uh, assisting with the music today, to Soren Duhom for acolyting and assisting. And as always, to our faithful tech hero, Dan Engelsmeyer, for making the whole thing run. Uh, we could not do this without their participation and support. Uh, one thing to note uh, coming up on May 17th, we will be joined by our bishop, uh, Eric Gronberg of the North Texas, North Louisiana Synod. He will be uh, sharing a, uh, the, the gospel and sermon uh, by video on that Sunday. And, uh, and he will be joining our adult education on that day as well. More details about that will be forthcoming, but please do watch your email. Also watch for information about our plans going forward as the situation changes nationally and here in North Texas as we make plans to continue our ministry in the next phase of this uh, outbreak. We thank you so much for your patience and support during these very unexpected and challenging weeks. And we will look forward to, to continuing to serve and reach out in the ways that are available to us in the weeks and months ahead. Those are today's announcements. I invite you to please stand as you are able for our gathering hymn Number 789, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures, feed us. For our use, your food prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have brought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have brought us, we are yours. Early let us seek your favor, early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, risen. is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. O oh God, God, your Son, your son makes, makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. bread. Open, Open the eyes of our, our faith, faith that, that we, we may see, see him in his redeeming work, work who lives and reigns, and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. first reading today is from Acts chapter 2. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, they, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of the Lord, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading today is from First Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure while you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he was suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins and his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. 
Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the young people who are with us to gather around for a moment. Come on up. Good morning to you, friends. I hope you are well. Good morning to you, Benjamin Bullfrog. Good morning, Pastor Ben. And good morning, camera people. Woohoo! We love the camera people. Yes, we do love the camera people. So thank you so much for being with us, spending a few moments with us today. So um, today, we, uh, on this day in Easter, the Easter season, we talk about Jesus as a good shepherd as one who provides for us, provides for our needs, and who protects us, who guards our souls. And so this is a good day, I thought, to talk a little bit about giving thanks, giving thanks to God who provides for us, especially at uh, mealtime, like at dinner or at, at, at breakfast. So um, I can't see, so you, you may as well be honest. Raise your hand if you say a prayer at before your meals, at least before dinner, but before any meal. Okay, all right. Uh, a, a, a few of us here do, and I bet some of you do at home. If you don't, if you do or if you don't, it's always good to learn some new prayers for mealtime. So let's maybe do that today. I have a prayer. I have a prayer that we do, that we do in my home. All right, let's, let's hear it, Benjamin Bullfrog. <clears throat> All right, we start in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, always good, always good. <clears throat> it goes like this. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It's good if you repeat it. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly host. Praise God above, ye heavenly host. Praise God who gives us flies on toast. Praise God who gives us fly, flies on toast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, flies on toast. Well, you know, at the, at the, but that's a, it's a staple in the frog community, Pastor Ben. That's, that's, uh, it's the food of, of my people. Okay, well, I, okay, I get that. I get that. But that might not work. That might not work for everyone. So maybe let's try a little variation on that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Pla praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, that is all of the uh, angels and the saints in heaven. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, I guess that does make a little bit more sense. Right, so you can say that before a dinner, before a meal, all right? And you know what I do, what's the simplest thing when I can't think of anything else, is I do this. Um, I say, bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we receive from your hands through Christ our Lord. Okay, pretty simple, right? Let's try it again. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we receive from your hands, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so that's a very simple way to ask a blessing on us and on the food and to give thanks for, uh, uh, give thanks to God uh, who uh, we receive all our good things as if directly from, from God's hand, right? Yeah, I can see why that day we kind of more all purpose than the flies on toast one. Right, yeah. But there are so many of these and, and the, the, the more you do this, the more of a habit it becomes. And, and the truth is, despite what I say about, about Benjamin's prayer, the more specific we can be in remembering our blessings and giving thanks for our blessings, the better. 
the more important they will seem to us and uh, the more the joy they will give us. Uh, and so if you can remember your family members by name, if you can remember the blessings of your day, one at a time, um, you, will, uh, you will feel them more and it will shape uh, your life as praying faithful people. All right. Um, thank you, friends. You can, uh, you can go uh, back to your regular seats and we will continue in a moment. Sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God our Father <clears throat> and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For you were going astray like sheep, Peter says in his letter today, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. We have many lovely images of Jesus as a shepherd. And they spring from the passages we hear on this Sunday, sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, which we hear uh, Jesus calling himself the Good Shepherd uh, a little bit later on in John's Gospel in this chapter. Uh, and, and we combine this with the parables that Jesus tells in the other Gospels about the shepherd who goes and seeks the one the one sheep who is missing um, uh, and leaving the 99 uh, who are safe on the hillside. And this is a very popular image of Jesus. It is a metaphor, unlike Christ on the cross or even un unlike Christ the high priest in the temple of God uh, uh, making sacrifice on our behalf. Uh, Christ as the good shepherd is a metaphor but it is a very popular metaphor, especially among North American Lutherans, who seem to have named uh, about one out of every three of our churches Good Shepherd, or uh, especially where I'm from, Shepherd of the Lakes, Shepherd of the Hills, and so forth. Uh, very, very popular image, um, very popular in stained glass, in painting, uh, a, a very kind of romantic uh, Victorian image of Jesus as, as a country shepherd, gathering and tending to his flock. But to make any sense of the image of the metaphor of Jesus as shepherd, we need to take a step back and think about what it means that humans are sheep in this particular image. And so, a few important facts about sheep. First, Contrary to widespread belief, sheep are not stupid. They are about as intelligent as cattle, and they are only a little less intelligent than pigs, who are indeed rather clever and wicked, for those of you who are not familiar with pigs. Secondly, sheep are social animals. They are herd animals. They tend to move in a group, and they tend to follow the lead of a dominant member of their flock, of their herd, or of a shepherd, or a, a herding dog who keeps them together. Thirdly, sheep are prey animals. And the uh, common technique for hunting sheep is for predators to cut one or more of them off from the herd where they are safest and uh, run them down in that way, uh, chasing them until they can't uh, go any farther. Number four, sheep are destructive. They graze deeply in the soil, uh, pulling out the roots of the grass more so than cattle do. And so they will, uh, they will make a field, a landscape, barren very quickly if they're not managed properly and moved around from place to place. And finally, last but by no means least, sheep are useful. They are used for meat and for milk and especially for wool. 
In fact, a major turning point in human history was the replacement of human beings with sheep in the English and Scottish countryside in many parts of the country because the sheep were so much more valuable than the humans were. Sheep are not pets. They are cute, they are relatively sweet and docile, but they are not pets, they are business. So all of these five things are in different ways true of us. We are smart enough, but we are leadable. We are social beings relying on each other every hour of every day, whether we know it or not. We are, do not have predators in the, in the normal sense. We are apex predators ourselves, but we are all vulnerable to a world that is full of danger, especially when we are alone. We do, like sheep, are destructive if we do not take special care for the resources on which we live. And finally, number five, we too are useful. We are useful, especially if we are, have a market employment or if we are caring for children, uh, we are treated as units of value. You put all this together and you see a picture of an animal that needs solidarity and that needs protection. And this all feels very timely. To take one example out of very many that we could look to in the very recent weeks. Last week, the federal government announced plans to force meatpacking facilities to remain open during the outbreak. Several plants in the Plain States in the Midwest, and, and I believe even here in Texas, had outbreaks uh, where um, uh, hundreds of workers were infected and, and some sickened, and at least 20 had died. Uh, in the process of cutting meat for market. And this forced a number of plants to close. They could not staff because too many of their employees were infected uh, or ill. And, or because state and local leaders had, had required them to close for safety. And under the new uh, federal government orders, a governor or mayor cannot close a meatpacking plant. And workers who get sick or the families of those who die cannot sue their employers for the risks that they've had to take. These people are useful people. Their work keeps their neighbors fed. Their work gives farmers a market for all of their chickens and hogs and cattle and, yes, lambs. And like anyone else, they are vulnerable, especially if they are cut off from the herd and if they are forced to make their own plans for survival, their own safety equipment, their own safety procedures, their own risks if they do fall ill. If anything good can come from a disaster, it is the recognition that any of us can get off, cut, cut off from the herd in the same way. Any one of us can lose a job because of circumstances entirely beyond our control. And when so many of us have, that point really comes home. Any of us can get sick Any of us can be forced to take unsafe risks because our livelihood depends on it and no one else is looking out for us. It is tragic and ironic that so many of the jobs that we have deemed essential over the last six weeks in a crisis are paid so little and exposed to so much risk. People whose welfare is very easily ignored becomes a pressing and urgent matter when we need to get food from the store. 
Um, grocery store employees are another group that has been sickened and died uh, disproportionately to everyone else. And so in these times, we recognize that we need solidarity with each other. We can't survive without it. And we need protection. So when we talk about Jesus Christ, or when we hear Jesus Christ speak of himself as a good shepherd, we have to recognize first that this is not, it's not a, a hobby, this is not a pleasant pastoral lifestyle, but that shepherding the sheep is hard work. It is demanding, it is risky, it is unsentimental. Throughout the, the, the history of the ancient Near East, in many cultures, and in, in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Old Testament, it is very common for rulers or religious leaders to be referred to as shepherds, either good or bad. The good shepherds will look out for their people, and the bad shepherds will abuse and exploit them. And a good shepherd, a good king, a good high priest, may well lose a sheep may, under the circumstances, lose many sheep. But a good shepherd does not sacrifice a sheep. A good shepherd does not scatter the flock or turn it against each other, benefiting some at the expense of others. And that is Jesus. Jesus does not force one to suffer so that another benefits, but Jesus takes all of the suffering into himself. Jesus does not force one to go alone and face the consequences, but Jesus goes alone on our behalf to conquer sin and death for us all. Jesus embraces each sheep one at a time and the whole flock together at the same time. And in his flock there are no rivals for safety and protection. There is no elite who may benefit while others suffer or take extra risks. There are none who work while others enjoy their labor. There is only the one flock bound together in love. And that, that is the emotional power of this Sunday and this image, at least for me. Ten years ago, nine years ago, in fact, on this very Sunday, we were taking care of two boys. In addition to our oldest son and our foster daughter at the time. There were two other foster children who were put into our care on a temporary basis. Uh, well, their brand new foster family had to be out of the state. And over the course of the 10 days that they were with us, we had some major struggles keeping them well. Uh, they were sweet, sweet boys uh, who had had a very hard life up to that time. And after uh, days of sickness, uh, one of them had stomach problems, the other had respiratory problems, uh, uh, and uh, I went to church. I went to fill in to church uh, for a colleague of mine. And I came in on Sunday morning just exhausted, emotionally and spiritually and, and physically. And I came in and the choir was singing the version of the 23rd Psalm that I'm going to sing in just a moment. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. And I just stopped and listened to this choir. And I thought about those boys who needed us in that moment as powerfully as any human being ever needs another. Boys we didn't know and had never met just 10 days before. They needed us to go the distance for them, for that little period of time. And it reminded me of how Jesus goes the distance for us in a way that is more powerful and more complete than anything we can ever do for each other. How he says yes to us in our need. 
and how he refuses to compromise, how he refuses to lose even one. We, his sheep, we hear his voice, and we speak his voice forward to the world who can only hear it through us. And as he protects us, so we are commanded to protect each other. And so we look for the places that people are being told to risk and to suffer on behalf of others without adequate compensation, without adequate protection. And we say no. And we hear God say no. And we look for those places where people are protecting and providing for each other. The food banks that sprang up overnight, the efforts at cooperation and protection, the people donating masks and time and prayers. And we say yes and we hear God's yes. Amen. the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will will come come again again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his his kingdom kingdom will have have no end. 
We believe, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, the people of this land, and of all the nations, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord. our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We ask your special blessing on those newly baptized, on those celebrating baptismal anniversaries, Elaine, Christina, and Mary Ellen, on those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Hans and Chashi Happy, and on those celebrating birthdays, Angela, Linda, Sarah, and Magdalena. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember especially Brooke, Janine, Chester, Rick, Dolores, Morris, Joanne, Bart, Catherine, and Virginia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to you all, to your mercy, all who have died, especially Kelly, Mac, Constance, Judy, Matt, and Bob that your will for them may be fulfilled. We ask your blessing and comfort on all who mourn them, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty, and it- Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. And those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. shepherd I'll not want he makes me down to lie in pastures green he leadeth me the quiet waters by he leadeth me he leadeth me the quiet waters by doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the paths of righteousness, e'en for his own name's sake. Within the paths of righteousness, e'en for his own name's sake. I walk in death's dark veil, 
yet will I fear no will. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. My head with oil thou dost anoint, and my cup overflows. and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. Please stand as you are able. Christ the Lord is yesterday. Lord on earth with angels say, Raise your joys and triumphs high. Sing in heaven earth reply. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered and feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in everything good, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join in our sending hymn. 
all people that on earth do dwell. out to change lives. Let us go out in peace and share the good news. Alleluia, alleluia.